Okay, uh, hello again, if you were there <laughs> just a minute ago, sorry for uh, all the inconvenience. Uh, I'm, the, I'm plugging and replugging. Um, I am Dario, I, I, am from, I work for SUSE in the uh, virtualization team. And this is a um, brief sketch of what uh, we uh, are going to talk about uh, today in this talk. So let's uh, actually jump right uh, into it. And let's say that uh, you want to avoid uh, performance aggressions uh, to occur, uh, for example, when you release a new version of your product, which in the case of SUSE is, uh, uh, would be operating systems. So simple example, uh, we want to avoid performance aggressions when uh, um, releasing a new version of uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise uh, uh, which is our operating system, and uh, uh, the way we do that uh, is through benchmarks. So we run benchmark on the current release, uh, then we run benchmarks on uh, what will be the next release, uh, and then we compare the results. Uh, if, sorry, if there are um, differences, uh, namely regressions, it's likely that the causes for, uh, uh, for those uh, are the things that change between the two releases. And in this uh, very, very simple example, uh, uh, it would be these two components. Of course, there's much more in a real system, but as a, again, it's just an example. Now, uh, the, this, is, this, still, this still applies, the concept is the same uh, when virtualization is involved. The only difference is that uh, in that case, the benchmarks uh, typically run inside VMs. Uh, what's already a little bit different, uh, as we can see, is that uh, the list of uh, components that potentially could introduce performance aggressions is already uh, quite a bit longer, even, if, even in these uh, silly um, examples, that, the, the example that I made up. Um, actually, so, with virtualization, it's possible, as we know very well, to run a version of the operating system inside of the VMs, which is not the same as the one that you are running on the host. So if we want to be really sure that we are checking uh, all the cases, we uh, must run, uh, yes, we must run benchmarks, but we must run them in a few more uh, cases and combinations, like, again, exemplified here. Uh, what about uh, VM sizes? Uh, VM sizes or VM sites. Meaning, uh, what about if there are bugs, uh, performance bugs that only shows up, uh, uh, for example, if uh, a VM has uh, more RAM than a certain threshold or fewer RAM than a certain threshold for what it takes. Uh, well, that means that, uh, again, we need to consider more combinations, meaning we need to run the benchmarks uh, in uh, VMs with uh, different sizes, different number of virtual CPUs, different amount of uh, memory assigned to them. Uh, it's not over yet. There is also, uh, it must also be said that uh, there are um, configurations that you can do for the VMs at the host level, like uh, some, any kind of uh, mm, tuning, for example, uh, of the host itself or of the VM by pinning the virtual CPUs, defining virtual topology, this kind of stuff, uh, which in turn means, uh, I think you, you're starting to, to, to learn how, how this goes, that uh, in theory we should uh, run mm, even more benchmarks, we have even more combinations, we should check, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, multiple and different configurations for, uh, for our VMs and run benchmarks inside uh, of them in all these cases. Finally, how cool is the fact that, uh, I mean, as you also know very well, uh, uh, given a server, given an host, uh, we can run from just one VM to hundreds of them. And how not so cool is the fact that this means that we also, if we want to be sure, uh, then should run benchmarks uh, in uh, scenarios that uh, are comprised of different numbers uh, of VMs. So multiple VMs uh, involved and a varying number of them. Yeah, I lied, it wasn't the last, the last thing. Uh, the last thing that I could come up, but there are probably more is the fact that uh, when I say run benchmark, uh, uh, 
I think we all imagine, uh, and I say run benchmarking multiple VMs, uh, I think it's quite uh, common to imagine that we run the same benchmark in all VMs, which is fine, but uh, it's actually quite possible, uh, depending on the use case, that uh, uh, VMs are going to run, uh, if you have more of them, different workloads inside, uh, inside of each one. And so if you want to be complete and precise, uh, we should also consider this, uh, uh, this situation. Uh, which means if you try to put uh, all these things together, that uh, our test matrix for making sure that we're not having regression just uh, exploded, basically. And uh, this brings us to the actual point of these points, because there are, <laughs> there are two of them, of this presentation, uh, which I'm going to try to make in the rest of it, uh, which are one, for managing this complex situation, we need tools, that's pretty, easy to imagine, I guess. And the second one is that we also need to make choices. Uh, I have some examples. I am going very, very quickly uh, through them just to, um, yeah, just, 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 I put them there just because, uh, I mean, the list of uh, uh, scenarios and use cases that I mentioned before, uh, I mean, as you can see that it wasn't made up. So I mentioned that uh, there could be um, performance issues that only manifest themselves uh, when uh, uh, the size, the memory of, uh, that you assign to, 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 to a VM is higher than a certain threshold, and this is one. Uh, because it was, depend, the problem was uh, the, the slowdown in the startup time of the VM was depending on the, on the size of the VM itself, and it was the most severe when the VM was quite big. Uh, then uh, uh, there are, we, we have faced uh, problems uh, um, like this one where on one, on, in this um, situation up here, whether or not the VM was having a virtual topology and depending on how the uh, virtual CPUs were pinned on the physical CPUs, uh, what happened was that uh, the uh, behavior inside of the uh, guest kernel was different, and different in a way that, has, that had performance implication. And uh, down here instead, uh, we see an example where whether uh, uh, the fact that um, the VM, again, uh, it's again related to virtual topology, whether or not the VM had an L3 cache defined as part of its virtual topology, also changed the in-guest behavior. This time it was glibc, which was behaving differently, causing uh, uh, performance anomalies. I'm not going into the details um, at all of these examples. There are, uh, I mean, there is this talk uh, uh, from uh, two years ago, I think, which, uh, which does exactly that, if you, are, if you are interested, or otherwise, ask me later. Uh, and this is the last one. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we, we want to consider the, the, the case where there are multiple VMs, uh, and here, is a, here, here we have an example where uh, there was a, a problem with the host um, scheduler behaving in a way that wasn't fair to all the VMs. And of course, this is something that you only realize if you, if you actually run benchmarks with multiple VMs. Right, I mentioned that we need tools, uh, in my opinion at least. And uh, one, the tool that I want to talk about uh, um, today is this uh, benchmarking suite called uh, MM Tests. There are others, there are many actually of them. This is the one that we use and it is the one that I choose to um, talk to you about. Uh, it's a benchmarking suite uh, uh, that uh, is um, in use uh, internally at SUSE, uh, but also um, in the Linux kernel mailing list and so the upstream Linux kernel community for quite some time actually, and it evolved over time. Again, uh, I will uh, describe it uh, in uh, not so many details. I will give you some, uh, some, some hints about it. If you are curious, find me or check out this uh, list of um, materials. Uh, basically, MM Test is, uh, I, I called it a benchmarking suite because it's uh, a piece of software, a collection of script, basically, that allows you to run uh, benchmarks, uh, a wide, quite a wide uh, set of benchmarks uh, in a repeatable and uh, automated way. Um, 
it also automatically collects results, runs some fancy statistics on top of them, and let you see those uh, results and uh, statistic analysis uh, in a bunch of different ways, which includes plots. Uh, it can uh, monitor and also trace and also profile the system while the benchmarks are running, so you can uh, go and uh, try to uh, figure out and have more clues uh, about where the problem could be uh, hiding, if there was any. And uh, it works through configuration files. So benchmarks have configuration files, which are basically bash scripts themselves uh, with a lot of exported variables. Uh, they can be parametric, so you can, uh, in the configuration file, uh, uh, try to fetch information about the, um, the characteristic of the uh, host or VM inside of which you are running the benchmark, so you don't have to encode details like, uh, like this. Um, and uh, it can be used, of course, uh, otherwise I wouldn't be talking uh, about it here, it can be used for run benchmarks in uh, virtualized uh, scenarios and inside virtual machines. Uh, and it also supports, um, it also, um, supports an host configuration file where you can define, for example, what kind of monitoring, what kind of tuning you want this time at the host level and also what are the VMs that you want to use for the benchmarking campaign. Um, yeah, as just uh, since I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, uh, um, it's possible to define in the host configuration file the characteristic of the VM. So you can uh, use MMTest to run benchmark inside multiple VM at the same time and uh, uh, also construct scenarios where the VMs are, have different characteristics. MMTest will uh, manage the life cycle of the VMs uh, all by itself. So it will uh, start them, stop them for running the benchmark inside of them. It will also uh, define and create and install an OS inside of them uh, if, uh, if they don't exist uh, um, uh, already, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, containers, uh, because uh, we are close to have uh, support inside of MMTest also for running benchmarks inside containers and defining containers in the host config file and doing yeah, pretty much the same that you can do with uh, VMs, so running benchmarks inside containers and maybe comparing the, the two solutions if you want. And it can work even in a more generic way, which we don't care too much about here. It's just because, uh, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to mention because it's useful, uh, for example, for running benchmark in situations that, uh, and, and uh, yeah, in, in cases where we don't yet have uh, the full support for, um, uh, for them in MM tests. Meaning, for example, uh, we want to run benchmarks in uh, kubevirt VMIs. Uh, we are working on supporting the, the, this scenario in MM tests properly. But until that happens, uh, uh, you can just uh, at least uh, run benchmark inside, inside the, the VMs managed by kubevirt by specifying uh, the, just the IP addresses in the, in the in the config file. MMTest won't be able to start and stop uh, the VMs through kubevirt until we implemented the, the, the support, but uh, benchmark will run there at least and you will have the results and everything. Now, I mentioned a few times that I want to uh, be able to run benchmarks inside VMs and inside multiple VMs. What happens if I do just that? So what happens if I start a CPU benchmarks inside two VM, I start it uh, at the same time in both of them, and I just let it run? It happens something that uh, I would call it uh, quite bad because uh, nothing guarantees that, for example, if the benchmark has phases or steps, or if you run multiple iterations of it, uh, that the various iterations, like in this example, uh, nothing guarantees that they are uh, synchronized. And so you have uh, different iterations uh, running against uh, other things or nothing uh, in the two VM, and the results uh, is not go going to be something that, uh, that, 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 is very, that is really useful. What about instead something like this, where uh, the uh, various iterations of this benchmark uh, run, uh, let's say, in lockstep um, inside, the, inside the, 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 the two VMs. 
uh, this is much better, and this is something that gives you results that you can use for uh, actually making uh, uh, yeah, assumptions and drawing conclusions about the performance of uh, this system. And MNTest has support for that. Uh, there are other benchmarking suite that does, but not many, at least uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge. And yeah, it does that by implementing uh, this barrier protocol uh, in the, uh, the host level, so VMs and DOS communicate in such a way that benchmarking proceeds uh, in a synchronized way and in lockstep. In the source code, there is even an ASCII diagram. I, I know you cannot see it from here. Check out the code. It's very, it's awesome. It took me more time to draw the ASCII diagram than to implement the protocol, but it's, I think it's worth it. This is a graphical representation of it. Uh, Apparently, I didn't throw uh, enough and then decided to, 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 to do more. And this is what happens in practice, which now, now I'm not sure it's my fault, is it? Maybe it is. Come on. Okay. Okay, fine. <laughs> no idea. Uh, so basically, what we see here is the, is the um, CPU load inside of the VMs. These are three examples where there are two VMs. And from the fact that uh, the curves are uh, basically identical, we, we can infer that uh, uh, what, I, what I just said, it's actually happening. So the benchmarks uh, inside of the VMs are running, uh, uh, are synchronized and running in lockstep. And this is a larger example with, with uh, 16 VMs. Um, documentation, there is, of course, some documentation for uh, MMTest, but, of course, it's not complete. Sorry about that. Uh, we are working on improving that. Uh, um, if you decide to try it, uh, which I really encourage you to, it may happen that you, run, that you end up in situations where you don't know how to do something because it's not part of the documentation yet. Uh, at which point you can, for example, I don't know, write an email to, 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 to me. Feel, feel free to do that, actually. Um, now, MMTest is a tool that can be used uh, and that we use for day-to-day uh, -day development. So you do a change in QEMU, let's say, that you suspect will have an impact on performance, and you use MMTest to run the benchmark and verify whether that is the case or not, and whether it's a, a, it has a good impact or not. However, there's more to it. So, for example, the performance team inside of SUSE, which is not my team, has implemented a CI on top of MMTests. They use it, uh, as I said already, for uh, um, testing our product kernels. Um, and, also the, and they also submit a report, the results, uh, to the Linux kernel mailing list. Uh, what, I am, yeah, what I am doing is pretty much the same thing, but let's say for virtualization. I am reusing part of what they have, but not completely, but that's because uh, for now, we are uh, uh, running, running it internally, and I uh, have to run it in a uh, lab, uh, which is slightly different from the one they use. So it's uh, internal details that I don't think they are uh, really interesting. In fact, uh, the code for uh, this uh, uh, set of scripts that implement a CI, virtualization CI around MMTest, uh, is here. I really recommend uh, not to go and check it out, not right now, at least it's very, very weak. Um, and also, as I said, uh, it's a little bit tied to some, some aspects of our uh, internal labs. However, it can work in other environments. I also use it for, uh, on my uh, test uh, boxes at, uh, at my place, which is not, not uh, Susan's lab. And I intend to develop it further and make it more general. It's just not really uh, ready uh, now, although it's already working and running uh, on these two boxes uh, in, uh, in our labs. Uh, the technical details of how it works uh, are not terribly interested, for example, because, uh, as I said multiple times, uh, it's uh, uh, still uh, uh, in its beginning. And uh, but most, more than that, because I want to use the 
time that I have left uh, for uh, work, for um, talking about and discussing how we are using it and how we could uh, use it uh, to even uh, yeah, even further. So right now we are using it for um, checking for regressions in uh, performance regression in our virtualization products which is basically what I said at the very beginning of the presentation. We take uh, a, ve a particular version of our um, supported uh, OSs, uh, we install it on a server, we run benchmarks on it, for example, we, we don't, of course, we don't do that only uh, when a release is closed, we also do that during development and uh, later after release during maintenance. So as soon as there are changes because some packages received maintenance updates or whatever, we rerun the benchmark and we check the result. And if there are the, and if there are the regressions, sorry, we try to hunt them down. Um, what benchmarks do we run? Well, that's the interesting part. Uh, for now, let's only say that we run benchmarks, bare metal benchmarks, uh, even only, if only to use them as a reference. And then we run the benchmarks in uh, just one VM, but in multiple sizes and multiple configurations, and also multiple VMs, multiple sizes, multiple configurations. Now, what we wanted to start doing is to also do the same, but on uh, upstream QEMU uh, and for the uh, QM, wider QEMU community, let's say. So, for example, we can take OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is a rolling distribution, so it always tracks the latest development of uh, oh, basically everything. Kernel, uh, system libraries, libvirt. Uh, and uh, we can use that as a base for um, building, uh, testing, uh, not, on, not, not really our own QEMU packages that we have there, that we have there but, as I said, um, upstream QEMU, the released version of QEMU, like, I don't know, 7.1, which is the latest, and also the next, next late, uh, previous latest. And, uh, yeah, and they report the results, mailing list, and all these things. We can also try to use it for testing the uh, latest developments of QEMU. So, fetching the latest commits from Git and uh, testing uh, them. One important part when, we, uh, when one thinks about doing something like that is uh, how to deal with uh, the, um, the results and the data that, uh, that you get out of this activity. And uh, ideally, we would want to, I don't know, connect this to some official CI and automatically send reports to the mailing list, but this won't, won't happen uh, right now. It won't happen until we are sure that, uh, the, that, that all the... Uh, all the thing work, works uh, uh, sufficiently well. For now, it will probably be us uh, taking care of uh, uh, monitoring the results uh, and if we uh, publish in the dashboards, for that, that's for sure, without spamming too much uh, anyone. And if we identify regressions, then uh, we will have to triage the, the, the problem, figure out uh, the commit or the component that it's introducing it, and. Uh, and uh, try to hunt it down, or at that point, alert the maintainers and uh, uh, ask for help fixing it. Now, questions, but not questions that I am taking from you, questions, rather questions that I am asking, uh, which are a little bit what I was uh, mentioning before. So, actually more than this, this is the, something that I, I, I feel like it's important. So we want to run benchmarks. We want to run a lot of benchmarks in a lot, diff, a lot of different configurations and setups and number of VMs and size of the VMs. Uh, which, how, but how many of them should we run and uh, which ones? Uh, now, of course, the, one, one might ask, uh, why not all? Uh, which is a very good answer, but uh, if we run not even all, but a lot of them, uh, we then each run will take a lot of time. And since we have limited man and machine power for this activity, then we risk uh, to make it uh, 
not very useful, the entire effort, because yeah, if there is a lot of, if, if, pass, if a lot of time passes between two runs, then uh, it means that it's going to be harder to identify uh, the, the changes or the component that it's introducing in regression. So yeah, I did put it here in the slides, uh, some uh, ideas and suggestions of what I planned to start with as, uh, for example, uh, which benchmarks, uh, as, uh, uh, as another example, what uh, type of VMs, so sizes, and uh, basing on experience, we were planning to focus on small VMs, uh, but also uh, keep an eye out for uh, larger ones. Uh, and uh, yeah, and the number of VMs, uh, it will, of course, depends on uh, the capacity of the server in terms of memory and CPUs and stuff like that. But for all these things, the input from the QM community would be highly appreciated because especially uh, when, when I say that uh, we want to uh, run it on uh, released and upstream QM for uh, helping uh, uh, discovering and tracking performance issues there, and it also makes sense that uh, we decide together what are the uh, most interesting and most important uh, uh, configurations and workloads that we want to, uh, to consider. Yeah, I, I think I've done another interesting thing is how when you run multi and it's the last thing that I'm going to say is uh, that uh, when you run a benchmark in multiple VMs, so for example, you run a benchmark in four VMs, you don't get one result, you get four, but the actual results that you want is one number, so how do you aggregate these results? Right now, I am just uh, averaging them and uh, computing standard deviation and these kind of things. Maybe, I mean, it's the thing that felt most natural for me, but maybe there are uh, other ways. Uh, if, 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 if that's the case, don't, don't hesitate to uh, yeah, come forward and, uh, and provide suggestions, they are very much welcome. And now I am really done, and this time questions are the ones that I am uh, happy to, to take and not to, uh, not to ask. I have a virtual question. How do you see Intel LKP tests versus MM tests in terms of Linux kernel testing? Interested to know things which MM tests can support, which LKP cannot? Yes, that's an uh, interesting question. I uh, don't know enough of LKP for comparing it with MM test, especially for uh, uh, kernel testing, so bare metal testing. The reason why I focused on uh, MM test uh, was uh, because I knew it and saw an opportunity for implementing uh, uh, let's say virtualization support of it, which is basically what I described when I said uh, that, I want, that, that, that it's now possible to run benchmark inside of it in multiple VMs, uh, synchronized and stuff like that. There are many benchmarking suites, uh, LKP one, but there are also others. And uh, yeah, uh, it's one of those things uh, that, uh, yeah, there, there are many of them and there is always uh, room for uh, comparing them uh, or uh, trying to use one, but uh, then uh, another one always comes, uh, is developed, uh, and yeah, it's a little bit how it goes. Yeah, I hope I answered. That was one there, but I don't think there's time. Sure. Okay, apparently time is up, so feel free, yeah, I'm also around for the rest of the conference, so feel free to um, find me and uh, ask anything else that you might want to know about this. Thank you.